Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Tross and we are continuing with the Microsoft Sentinel uh, series here. This run right here is part four. What I'm talking about here is I just want to go through the Microsoft Sentinel uh, blade before we do anything else and just explain each one to you. So we have the Microsoft Sentinel up here um, on the screen. And right now what you're seeing is the, uh, it says you're currently viewing the new overview experience. You can always switch back to the old one. And there's not much showing here because guess what? We just created it. So this is great um, because you know, when you're seeing a lot of stuff come in, sometimes it's hard for you to digest all that information. But right now we don't really have much in our lab environment. So if I click off this, this new overview, this is the older view and you can see how many events, alerts, incidents, so on and so forth, but no data is found because this was recently deployed. So what does the overview show? So first of all, this is preview, right? It's in preview. So what it says is the overview section provides a high level summary of your Azure Sentinel deployment, including key metrics, incidents, and alerts. So what I have here on the screen is just some um, screenshots that I have from another Sentinel that I was running. And this one doesn't show too much information as well, but at least you're seeing a little bit more data than what was shown on the one that I have in the Cloud Scholars um, portal. Okay, so back on the next screen, we are at logs. So what will we get from the log screen? So our logs, the log section provides you access to log data collected by Azure Sentinel. You can query and analyze logs using Kustel query language. So this is similar to what, how you would use a log analytics workspace. You can essentially think of it as the same thing. So the next one on the blade is our news and guide. All right, so this section provides information about new features that are coming out in Sentinel. So if you look at the screenshot, we have Microsoft Sentinel Content Hub um, and OOTB Content Centralization. We have simplified pricing. So there's a lot of different things that are going to be coming out. So if you look at that section, you'll be able to see exactly what's going on there. So next one we have a search. So search, the search section allows you to perform searches on your data in Sentinel. Then we have incidents. The incident blade allows you to view and manage security incidents. Incidents are collections of related alerts grouped together for investigation and response. So here you would see all your different incidents that you have um, in your organization and what you need to take care of. So we have workbooks. Workbooks are customizable dashboards that allow you to visualize and analyze data. This section provides access to pre-built and custom workbooks. We have the hunting section is where you can perform proactive threat hunting. It allows you to secure, allows security analysts to search for potential threats based on custom queries. So we will definitely be going through this um, later on in this series and I'll show you exactly how to go about hunting. Uh, notebooks. Notebooks allow you to create and use Jupyter uh, notebooks for data analysts and documentation within the Azure Sentinel environment. I think I pronounced that right, but it sounds like looks like Jupyter to me. And then we have entity behavior. Entities can include user, host, application, and other components of the IT environment. Each entity has associated attributes and its behavior is monitored over time. So this is really good for you to know. Uh, entity behavior is going to monitor and see exactly how that user, that identity, that device is being used. And if it sees something that's a little bit out of the norm, then you can get a trigger alerted for that specific resource. Then we have threat intelligence is information about potential or actual security threats that helps organizations understand and respond to cybersecurity risk. We have the MITRE attack, which is a preview. I like this new thing that they're coming out with. Um, I have one client that I was working with, which is a bank, and they follow the MITRE framework. So this is really great because they are able to see it from a visual standpoint and say, okay, where are we at? How well are we doing within our organization? So this really helps them uh, investigate and, and visualize what's going on within their organization and their, their security posture. So this one is a content hub. So the content hub is really great. The Content Hub is a centralized in-product discoverability, single-step deployment, and enable out-of-the-box solution and content in Microsoft Sentinel. So Content Hub is where you would be able to do some type of like your data connectors. You would see exactly, you know, what new solutions you want to um, get set up uh, within your Azure Sentinel. 
So we have repositories, which is in preview. Uh, this blade provides you a way to create and manage connections between Microsoft Sentinel and GitHub or Azure DevOps repositories. So if you have your um, repository, you can connect it to here. Um, so this way you have a connection into your Azure Sentinel. So community, exactly what that is. You know, you can see the latest threats. You can see how other people are utilizing it. You can see exactly what's going on um, to help uh, protect your enterprise. Then we have Workspace Manager. Uh, Microsoft Sentinel Workspace Manager enables users to centrally manage multiple Microsoft Sentinel workspaces within one or more Azure Sentinels. So this is great if you are MS, uh, MSP, a uh, managed service provider where you are managing multiple clients and this gives you a holistic view of what all your different clients are. This way you can work and do what you need to do to um, uh, effectively manage those different uh, resources. So then we have data connectors. This is huge. This is exactly what you'll be using within Microsoft Sentinel. You have to connect it to some type of data so Microsoft Sentinel can do the ingestion and then do the work. So the Microsoft Sentinel data connection page shows a full list of connectors and the status of your workspace. Then we have analytics. Analytics is where you configure and manage analytics rules. These rules can help detect suspicious activities and security threats. We have the watch list. Watch list in Microsoft Sentinel allows you to correlate data from a data source you provide within the events in your Microsoft Sentinel environment. Uh, for example, you might create a watch list with a list of high value assets, terminate employees or service accounts in your environment. So this is just a way for you to get more eyes on a specific set of resources. Uh, automation. This section provides access to playbooks and automation features. Playbooks allow you to automate responses to incidents and alerts. And then we have settings. Uh, settings allow you to manage general settings, permissions, and advanced configurations for Azure Sentinel. So what you see on the screen right now, when you go to settings, there's a Microsoft Sentinel pricing. And with this, you can now say, okay, listen, I want to have a price in and you see down below it says, so let's just go to 100 gigs a day. There's a 31 discount over pay as you go. So if you do pay as you go and anything within Microsoft Azure, they're trying to make their money. So if you do pay as you go, there are times where you will probably forget that resource. And then next thing you know, you have a bigger bill than you would like. What they're doing here is saying, hey, listen, just, you know, we're going to give you a discount for 100 gigs a day. But if you were to use that 100 gigs a day and you didn't take the discount, you would be paying higher. So you're say, they're saying, listen, pay us this amount at this threshold for 100 gigs a day. And then you also are able to, map, to make sure that your budget doesn't go over. So that's the great thing about this. But keep that in mind, if you choose a tier, so let's just say you chose uh, 300 gigs a day, you cannot make a change to that until 30 days after. So you can go up, you can go down. You have to stay at that tier for 30 days until our 30 or 31 days. I, I might be wrong, but it's it's definitely, you know, you have to wait like like at least 28 days, right? So I'll, I'll throw that out there, but I, I'm pretty sure it's 30 days before you can now make a modification to that tier. So keep that in mind. Um, so you want to make sure with the data connectors was the other page. And if you have a lot of more data connectors, that means there's a bigger ingestion that's going to be coming into your log analytics workspace where that cost is going to start going up. So it's really important that you pay attention to your settings. So that this way, this, this is the area and I'll, I'll show you in the video as well, but I wanted to point out that this is the area where you would uh, make sure that your price and tier is correct. So that this way you're paying only what you want to pay. All right, so we are back over at the Azure portal and yep, we went through all of these blades over here. So now that you know what they are, um, let's talk a little bit more about how do we go about using them. So that is a wrap for this video. This video was more about going through the menu items within your Azure Sentinel. Um, we will continue with this uh, series for Microsoft Sentinel. Where we talk about get into something where we're looking at incidents. We're talking about workbooks and definitely getting into uh, hunting. So looking forward to creating more videos for you around Azure Sentinel. So I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope that it was beneficial. Please continue watching the series. Um, I have a lot more information to provide to you. But if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button and share this with a friend. I really appreciate it. It helps me with the alg YouTube algorithm so more people like you can see this content. So um, as I always like to end the videos, um, as always, you know, my goal here is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you.
and see you next time.